the students when they finish with uh, their studies of uh, computer engineering and uh, software engineering typically don't know don't know enough about the, uh, the software testing and additionally uh, what can be seen is that uh, also some level of software testing uh, knowledge is not only required for for uh, the quality assurance uh, guys it is also required for the software development uh, because the software developers also need to understand at least some some level of software testing in order to be able to test their own code because on the unit level uh, the developers are required to test their own code so uh, this is first uh, a little bit of introduction about the topic uh, and uh, why the why the software testing is uh, important well uh, if uh, defects are found uh, late uh, they can be really costly so they can cost either money or even the reputation of the company which have built it because uh, if uh, uh, during the software testing you didn't find the defects they will uh, typically arise during the production and they will be seen by the and the customers uh, and then clients uh, and then users of course uh, this will inevitably lead to loss of uh, money, reputation, and just imagine some sort of uh, critical application, just uh, like uh, air traffic control or uh, uh, automotive uh, autonomous uh, car software. If it fails, it can also uh, cost some lives, so the people can lose lives in that case. <clears throat> so the topic is. Uh, very important uh, the software testing is the branch which is uh, almost equally important as the software development although it is not seen like that uh, by the most uh, uh, academic institutions and also about, uh, with the most companies but we have to understand that this topic is really important because the the, the quality assurance and the software testing are there to uh, to uh, assure that the program and the software when it goes to the market will actually be stable enough uh, and uh, that it will meet the client needs. So as I have uh, uh, already introduced, the problem is that uh, from the survey, we have also uh, see uh, that uh, almost on uh, every uh, software engineering course at the academic institutions, uh, there is really a little attention to the software testing. and. Uh, Typically, the, the students are entering this kind of market with very little practical uh, testing experience. Uh, so the, the idea was to see what were uh, successful examples in the past, uh, which uh, were utilized in some universities, uh, and uh, maybe in the future to try to build our own system to actually address this kind of topic. <clears throat> so uh typical way uh, how you can uh, let's say interest your students is to integrate some sort of collaborative environments uh, typically in most cases those are some kinds of simulators which uh, can uh, be used by the students and then you can understand much better by going to the simulations uh, how the specific system works so there are a lot of uh, uh, learning uh, learning uh, environments and simulators for other topics as well so for example for the viral sensor networks the amount of uh, available simulators is huge it is not that case uh, with when we talk the soft with about the software testing so actually uh, we were able to find just a few uh, solutions uh, which uh, were uh, used to some extent that we can assume that they were successful so we uh, searched for the solutions which were use at least for, for a year or two on, on, on some universities and to try to see their experiences. So, okay, let's go to the next slide. Uh, what is uh, the shape of the traditional lectures? Uh, well, in the traditional lecture, teacher will, of course, lead the, the, the teaching process and the students are just the passive learners. Uh, and they just listen and receive the information and uh, this will typically result that the students uh, will become passive and uninterested and they will just memorize the materials 
and just learn what is enough to pass the exam. So they will not go into any kind of deeper understanding of, of the topic. Uh, so uh, the goal of the modern approach is to have the innovative uh, lectures where the students will actually also be active members and where we will ask them to actually uh, do the practical examples. And this kind of approach will typically uh, have them more motivated and more engaged. Uh, uh, this is why you should uh, think in, in the direction to mix the classical uh, lectures with uh, some sort of entertaining sessions, uh, at least to encourage the competitiveness and, of course, the knowledge transfer between the students themselves. So you will see that uh, most of the solutions which we have found uh, 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 in the in the available uh, published literature and uh, on on other uh, on other universities, where actually uh, the, the the games because the gamification is one of the approaches uh, where the students will get uh, much more engaged and much more active and much more competitive and as the side effect of course they will learn a lot more than just uh, doing the plain uh, plain traditional lectures. So <clears throat> the, 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 the idea is that uh, we have seen that the best uh, way is actually to try to introduce some sort of game-based learning to the courses. Okay. Let me just go to the next slide. It has a bit of delay. So one of the first uh, environments which he have found is this uh, rest style uh, environment. Uh, so uh, this is a, a traditional uh, cyber learning environment. Uh, it was built like a, a, a repository of software testing tools at the beginning. However, over the time it evolved uh, and uh, it became a collaborative learning platform offering a lot of content, uh, tutorials, applications, and so on. Uh, it, has, uh, it has the support uh, for uh, C++ language and Java. Uh, including uh, the unit testing and system testing through the user interface of that tool. And uh, it uh, allowed you to, for example, compute the co code coverage for some source code you have provided or to execute the, the static code analysis and obtain a different kind of metrics, which was important for the students to actually see uh, on some examples how those uh, techniques are applied in practice. Uh, so this is just uh, the, the structure of that system. As you can see, it has it had a lot of modules. Uh, it had the, the, the course management, of course, where, where they were uh, separated into different courses. Uh, they also had a, a bit of social aspect where uh, the students can, could create the profiles and uh, they had their activities. And also they had uh, an option to, to earn some bonus points by com completing some activities and those bonus points were introduced as the part of, of the final uh, grade that the student uh, actually achieved on that particular uh, exam. Uh, so uh, the interesting thing was, of course, the, 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 the point where they understood that the social aspect also could be uh, uh, interesting for the students. So. Uh, the, the platform, of course, uh, was uh, trying to encourage the engagement of the students. So the engagement is the biggest problem, especially when the, the topic is not that interesting. You have to keep their engagement in some way. Uh, I also try to do that in my uh, lectures. Uh, I always uh, include a lot of practical examples. And by seeing those, uh, those solutions, uh, uh, which were uh, kind of successful in the past, uh, also brings the idea maybe to in, in, introduce and implement some sort of uh, gaming environment uh, ourselves. Uh, but let me just focus for, for, for now on, on this presentation. So uh, this particular platform also included social networking and the activities, uh, which could be done either by individual students or by team activities. Uh, and uh, one of the benefits of the platform was that it hosted a lot of testing tutorials about different testing techniques and uh, different testing tools. And they also provided the quizzes where they 
could actually test the the, the student knowledge uh, about some topic and these uh, points which they gathered those virtual points were later on uh, could be used as the small part of the overall course grade something like the activity uh, point so this particular tool was employed uh, and used in the florida international international university uh, unfortunately it's not in use anymore so it was used uh, something like five or six years ago however the students feedback uh, indicated that uh, the the platform was really interesting and uh, really engaging and it motivated them to to uh, learn more about the software testing concepts uh, of course the reasons why the the platform is not uh, uh, in use anymore and are not known, but uh, I thought that this is a, this was one of the good examples of how you can uh, introduce some modern uh, modern techniques uh, in in the course of the software testing. So they of course published uh, uh, the results of of uh, the student satisfaction and uh, the results uh, after some surveys uh, from the students indicated that they really enjoyed this addition to the traditional courses and that they were happy with the obtained level of, of, of knowledge. Uh, another uh, system was called, uh, not that uh, uh, interestingly, but just the automated system for the interactive learning of software testing. Uh, and this uh, particular tool was also used to engage students more and to uh, enable them to create better test sets. So uh, how it worked, uh, it worked that the students will would get the specification for a program they, and they should write the test cases and of course create the test suite and submit it through the system. Uh, so after they submit the, the test suite, they will get the response from the system uh, about how good their test suite actually is and what can they uh, do to improve their test cases. And they will, of course, then improve their test suite and uh, submit it again. And through the iterations, they will learn how to actually build uh, a, a, a test suite, which is actually adequate. Because the important thing is to have the adequate test suite in order to be able to actually detect the defects. So if your uh, test cases doesn't uh, don't uh, cover all the functionalities of the program or uh, if we talk about the structural or white box, white box testing, if your test cases actually don't cover all the statements or all the paths through the code, uh, you cannot be sure if you actually maybe missed some, some uh, defect. Uh, the additional concept which was introduced here was also that the system was built that uh, the students should not test their own code. This is again because uh, of the objectivity because uh, somebody who has, has, has written the code is not objective to uh, actually create test cases uh, properly for that, especially at the level of the students, uh, because of course they are biased to the, the, that code and uh, they will not see the errors in their own code. So uh, they have tested other people's code uh, to provide uh, as much objectivity as possible. Um, <clears throat> and this was uh, uh, based on the mutation testing and the data flow testing uh, techniques, which were behind. So those, uh, those were uh, the techniques uh, used by the system itself to verify that uh, the test suit is either good or not. Uh, and if there was some uh, error with the test cases, uh, the system also provided the examples of the defects which uh, the test suit uh, didn't expose. So the student uh, would understand how actually to, uh, to build uh, a much better test suit and get better results. And of course, this led to better understanding, better uh, uh, ability to, to actually build the test cases and build much more uh, useful test suits. So this was the overall test system structure. So they have used a, 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 a bunch of uh, codes which were collected uh, from from uh, from the from the campus, uh, and uh, they used the not to go into the details. So uh, they used the mutation testing to actually see. Uh, 
in the data flow testing to see if the test suite which was, which was provided actually was able to expose all the defects or not. So the other uh, several approaches which we have we have uh, covered uh, are more, more more based on the actual gamification. So uh, first uh, example is the code defenders. Uh, again, which was based on the mutation testing. This uh, this actual uh, idea was that you have two players, the attacker, which will uh, create the mutants uh, in the code, uh, and the defender, which will try to create the best uh, possible test set that will uh, detect those mutants and uh, defend the program. So this was the turn-based uh, game, and actually the, the UI uh, looked like this. So the, the, the attacker screen was uh, like this. So you have the task to create mutants, and uh, uh, the defender screen was uh, like this. You, of course, need to provide the new unit, unit, uh, unit uh, test case uh, with the ability to uh, detect that particular mutant. So the, the, the application was uh, uh, built as the web application and it was meant uh, for two players, one attacker and one defender, additionally uh, focusing on, on the actual uh, competitiveness between the players. Uh, again, the feedback from the students uh, about this application was uh, really good. So they they were uh, actually more than happy and uh, learned a lot. Uh, again, this game is only in the prototype phase. Uh, uh, not sure if it will go live or not. Uh, again, it was a limited information which we we could have collected, but uh, it looks like an interesting concept. Then. Uh, there was also the testing game, which was uh, uh, another example introduced in 2017. Uh, so the web application with 2D uh, graphics, uh, with, which will cover uh, a lot of, uh, basically a lot of uh, techniques and all the important techniques which the students should learn, such as the black box, white box testing, and so on. Uh, and it was, uh, uh, like uh, traditional uh, video games, uh, the platform games, you had an avatar and you had some sort of set of abilities and the levels were directly mapped to the three major topics which every uh, course should cover, of course, uh, black box, white box and mutation. Uh, so the actual user interface looked like this. So uh, for example, students had some task to, for example, uh, analyze the specification for a simple uh, bubble sort function, for example, and they should be able then to eliminate the enemies in the arrays which are not valid for some sort of reason, either by the length or uh, different uh, limitations. Uh, or this is also the part where uh, they uh, learned about uh, the definition use table and uh, the fuse graph, so uh, about the white box and the control flow graph. And the students actually rated the game uh, quality as very good and they were really motivated and happy to use it. Uh, the last topic, uh, the last successful uh, uh, approach we, which we have found is the prototype, which was not the game, traditional game, uh, computer game, it was the card game. So this was uh, the idea uh, to use uh, uh, the card game uh, to uh, to ensure the competitiveness between the students and those cards were uh, actually let me just we go to the cards were similar uh, to other uh, cards which uh, uh, you can use in traditional cardboard games. So the questions here were uh, derived from the ESTQB uh, 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 um, standard, which is ESTQB, of course, is uh, is the regulatory body and uh, the licensing body for the software testers, where you can actually uh, get a lot, uh, get a certificate, and the test, the the, the questions were actually uh, derived from from uh, their suite of uh, uh, questions for the certificate itself. So, what we have learned from from all these approaches which we have covered. Uh, so, uh, of course, software testing is very important topic and uh, you should, of course, uh, somehow engage the students because in some extent this topic can be a little bit monotonous and dull 
So if students, of course, become demotivated, uh, they will not uh, learn the topic uh, uh, on the level which we uh, wanted. And uh, you should think about introducing some additional materials and some additional stuff to make them more engaged. So uh, try to summarize, uh, I will finish here to allow also the, 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 the question session. Uh, summarize, uh, what we have seen from our research is uh, that uh, the, game, the gamification approach is uh, something which the students will accept uh, in the most easy way uh, because it will trigger their competitiveness and uh, when they compete between each other they will typically uh, typically be able to learn more and they will share the knowledge between them and uh, this way uh, it appears that the gamification will could be uh, one of one of the solution for this particular topic as we have seen that the gamification is also included in other other topics as well of the software uh, uh, software development courses so this could be also solution here so okay i, I will uh, finish here uh, to to allow the question session uh, i hope that you uh, enjoy the, the presentation so this is interesting topic and we are all trying find trying to find a way how to make it more interesting for the students thank you very much any questions please Thank you, Mion, for presentation. I have one question. During this um, analysis of, of this uh, software testing teaching tools, um, are there any, any, any solutions for, for testing related to cybersecurity? We haven't found any. So uh, we, uh, we did really extensive uh, uh, search. We have found about 30 uh, solutions uh, from the available literature. However, we decided to include only the solutions which were actually used on the universities. So that, that was the filter. So uh, we didn't include anything which was in, in the, uh, just in the testing phase or implementation phase, we wanted to see uh, what were, were the results of the tools which were actually used on the universities. So unfortunately, we didn't find anything about the testing cybersecurity. We know, of course, that the cybersecurity and ethical hacking and, uh, of course, uh, the penetration testings are, are also uh, very interesting topics. Uh, however, they're typically not, uh, not introduced uh, already on, on the introduction of the software testing course. They are typically uh, uh, introduced later on, either on later years of the studies or even on the master studies. So we didn't find anything about that. Okay, thank you. Any more questions? Okay. Um, once again, thank you, Mildred, for presentation. Thank you very uh, much. Believe... And due to the classes, I will leave the room now. So I hope that other will also have a great presentation. Thanks you. Bye bye.